Hello, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're revisiting a client's pond. A year ago we diagnosed skin flukes and gill flukes in them and we treated with Prezi Quantel in water. And every time when we treat disease, we always try to aim for the er total eradication. And now that we're approaching winter, the water temperature is going to decrease and the decrease in water temperature is going to affect their metabolic rate and their immunity to, uh, to be able to heal from diseases. So uh, it's an opportune time uh, to check out their health, making sure that they are okay to go through winter without any problems. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to catch the fish uh, so that we can take new biopsies and skin mucus spray. Now we've got the fish, and just basically I'm supporting the fish's body weight with the net, um, keeping it away from the floor so that it doesn't injure himself and, and knock himself. And just basically we need to be patient and wait till the fish has calmed down. You can support his body weight with your hand, it makes him feel a little bit more secure. While you've got him in the net and while he's calming down, uh, basically have a good look all around its body. The parasites that you can see with your naked eye are anchor worm, which is also known as Linnea, and also fish lice. And sometimes when you get your face really up close to the fish, be careful that they don't slap you. So this fish has it's got it all clear in terms of large parasites. And now I'm just going to take a gill biopsy. It's coming through here, holding the operculum open. So now I'm just taking a skin mucus scrape and the reason is that the parasites tend to like to live on the skin as well as on the gills so we're taking two samples. So now that we've taken a sample we should test it immediately, examine it because what we're looking for is movement, um, some motility from the parasites. Uh, we, I always check one fish at a time, I don't make 10 um, samples and then test them. So we're looking at the gills. The uh, gills are looking nice and healthy. They don't have excess mucus. They're nice and red. The blood is flowing through them really well. But what I noticed from the skin scrape though, is that there's a lot of trichodina. So if you have a look at this, as you can see some mucus, that's just normal. The amount of mucus that you collect from the fish. Uh, you can see these little round things, they're moving around, you know, just rotating along on its own or just buzzing around just like your iRobot uh, vacuum cleaner thing. So that to me tells me that it's a ciliated type organism because they move in very smooth motions or in these cases some of them are not moving at all. But they're very circular and round, they remind me of either bicycle spokes or perhaps uh, UFOs, so it's pretty cool to look at them. So normally if you find uh, two or three of these in a skin mucus scrape, uh, that's not a problem, but in, in these numbers, it is going to be an issue. And the reason for that is I think there's probably too much organic matter in the water. They tend to graze and, and munch on these things, but in, in numbers such as high as these, uh, they will start then latching onto the fish, start grazing on the skin mucus, cause an irritation, some inflammation, some dermatitis in the skin and then they're going to come down with disease. So what we really need to do is we need to give a, a good clean of the environment and possibly uh, try to treat it with a, a little bit of formalin at, at the lowest dose which is about 0 0.0125 mils per liter. So with anything I do, I'm always testing it as a minimum of three fish. Uh, that way you get a good idea of what's happening in the pond. If I don't find anything but the fish are still dying, I'll go up to 10 fish and by then you should be able to see gauge what's going on. Right, so we've finished the sampling of the fish, checking on the gill uh, and skin health and I can say that we've successfully eradicated the pathogens from the previous visit. 
But now what we're dealing with now is Trichodina. Trichodina is not a primary fish pathogen, an opportunist it is. And basically means that we need to clean up as much of the organic matter that's in the pond and in the filters and possibly treat it with formalin, uh, depending on how things are going. As part of the standard diagnostic tester of the water quality, I'm testing ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. That will tell me about the biological um, activity of the biofilter making sure that there's no problems and then I'm going to test the pH to know exactly whether the water is acidic or alkaline uh, that affects the fish a lot uh, then we're going to test the buffering capacity of the water with the uh, alkalinity test which is uh, KH and we're going to test the general hardness which is called GH or permanent hardness and this helps me I guess with koi and goldfish it's not exactly important uh, that it's not going to cause an disease but it's, it helps me to know if I'm using certain drugs or what dose rate to use it at and for this case because we're dealing with a uh, algal issue we also want to test phosphate so what we test today are a standard set of samples ammonia nitrite nitrate that's for the biofilter activity your pH and your KH uh, to do with the acidity of the water and your general hardness to do with the amount of calcium and magnesium in the water and the other one that we're adding to the standard set is your phosphate level because we're dealing with algae so of these everything is fine except for the ammonia nitrite and the phosphate so we're seeing traces trace levels of ammonia and nitrite both of them not at a level that's going to kill fish but it tells me that there's some imbalance between the amount of fish the stock that's in there uh, the amount of food that's being produced or fed in there and also the biofilter. Maybe they've increased the biological mass, maybe they've fed it in the last four or five hours or maybe the biofilter is damaged for some reason, maybe overwashed uh, or maybe there were chemicals being used in the water that's harming the, bio, the bacteria that live in the biofilter. So we need to investigate these uh, for the reason. The nitrate level it's not surprisingly that it's at zero and, and that's because we've got some pretty massive water plants that's taking up the nutrients but she did mention that the algae is an issue and the reason the algae is an issue is that the phosphate level is above 2 milligrams per liter and this is going to be nutrients that the algae is going to use so we need to really check with what the food that she's feeding the fish uh, maybe it's of lower quality it's pretty uh it's packed in phosphates we don't want food that's too high in phosphate so. Ooh. Ooh, you can see there's a lot of sludge in there and that's a build up of decaying matter and this this can create anaerobic conditions uh, as you know the biofilter the bacteria actually require oxygen and if you have too much of this sludge you can actually change the um, the makeup of the bacteria you can kill off your good bacteria the nitrosone monas and then your nitrobacters uh, so we really need to do a thorough clean I know with these sorts of filters they tend to do the flush um, they've got these levers that actually pull the sponge so it squeezes all this muck out uh, we may need to do it more frequently because of the amount of organic matter that's coming through um, and be able to have nice clean aerated water going through and giving nutrients to the good bacteria rather than the anaerobes. So what we've done here is we've collected, uh, this is just a normal bin, we've collected water from the pond. We don't want to use any chlorinated tap water because that's going to kill the bacteria. So just a few squeezes and clean pond water. And we'll take out the biofilter material, the media, and basically that's as clean as you want it to be. You don't want it to be fully clean. You want a bit of brown stuff coming out through it. Uh, that way you know that you've not washed off the beneficial bacteria from your filter media. Just replacing the filter. You can see the water is still brown, but that, that's okay. Now you can see we've cleaned up the uh, filter, the pre-filter as well. Uh, and you can see the waterfall is moving much more quickly. 
Okay, so Linda, what we found is that your ammonia and nitrite levels were a little bit high. It's not enough to kill the fish or cause stress or disease, but it's showing that your biofilter was not healthy. Uh, we opened up the biofilter, we could see a lot of muck in there. That's all the algae and yeah. dead material that's been yeah. caught up, mm. probably causing anaerobic conditions and killing off your good bacteria. Yeah. The other thing as well is that we also found that the hoses were actually hooked up the wrong way, the inlet and the outlet. Um, not sure who did that, but the pond maintenance guy should be should have been able to pick that up. So we've cleaned up your biofilter, and you can see the waterfall is running a lot more efficiently. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Like, uh, that's be good. Yeah, before it was like a drain pipe, but now it's yeah. like Niagara <laughs> Falls. Yeah. Okay. So Linda, the other thing that we found was also the high phosphate levels. It's about two or more milligrams per liter, and I think that's contributing to the uh, algae issue. And also possibly because the filter was hooked around the wrong way, you might have had the algae issue as well. Yes. So we had a look at your fish food. It says it's thirty-five percent protein, and the highest in terms of what makes up the protein is fish meal, uh, corn meal, soy meal, and wheat meal. And and that all sounds pretty good for the koi. So uh, it's possibly that they, they didn't do approximate analysis. It doesn't show what the phosphate levels are, but I would say that that food is high in phosphate so you may want to change to a different type of diet yes, that's yes. low in phosphate. Okay, I'll do that. Now we can say that we have successfully eradicated all the skin and blue fruits that we found last time. Oh, well. Um, and that's so, good. so that's good. So we achieved what they we want seem, to do. They seem healthy. Yeah, they do seem healthy. And the only issue is that we found was Picadina. These are little round uh, protozoal parasites. Yep. They are not primary pathogens. They they actually grow in numbers by eating all the dead decaying matter down the bottom. But in the numbers that we saw, it's starting actually to become concerning. Mm. Uh, so what we need to do is we'll get a pond maintenance bite out and do a good vacuum of the bottom of your pond yeah. and just check on the biofilter again. Yeah. And that should, by removing all the food source for, for that uh, protozoa, it means that it's not going to be harmful to your fish because if they yeah. build up in numbers they're going to start latching and grazing onto the fish mm. causing skin irritation, scratching and then they'll get sick green infection so it's a good, I, good thing that you got me out early okay, that's uh, right, so yeah, like, I need so. Richmond, there's something wrong <laughs> yeah, so, mm. yeah, so that's it, I think well,